Okay, so looking at 2.2, we're going to just discuss the difference quotient. And the difference quotient it gets a separate video because this is a separate context that you need to understand. Up until now, we've looked at um, instantaneous rate of change and average rate of change with respect to adding numbers and having numbers. Difference quotient is used to find the general equation of the slope of a line and then you find that it using a very small h value. So what we're doing when determining the difference quotient, we need to think algebraically. We're going to use algebra to determine a general equation of the slope of a tangent. For example, if you were asked to determine the slope of the tangent using the difference quotient, you must simplify the expression algebraically. And this has to be done first. It is so important that I've actually set aside a separate video so that we can exp so I can go through and explain this. Example number one: determine the slope of the tangent to the curve y equals three over two minus x at x equals negative one using the difference quotient. What does that mean? What we're actually doing is trying to find the general equation to the slope of the tangent at x equals negative 1. So the general equation first. Once we use that, we can find the specific value of the slope of the tangent at x equals negative 1. How do we do this? Well, the difference quotient is delta y over delta x. Delta y is going to be f at x plus h minus f at x over h. What does that mean for us? Well, h is going to remain a variable. We're going to plug in x plus h into the equation, and then we're going to substitute x in the equation, just the regular what it is, all divided by h. Now what we're going to do is substitute. At x equals negative 1, what does the above equation look like? So, Every time we see an x, we're going to plug in negative 1, leaving h the way it is. So, what I'm doing here is because I have a fraction within a fraction, I'm going to separate the numerator from the denominator, and that's what I did here. And we get, as that numerator, we will have 3 over 2 minus negative 1 one for this part right here and this side we're going to have 3 over 2 minus in brackets negative 1 plus h. What happens next? Well let's repeat what we have there and from that what we're going to do is substitute. Now that looks like a lot of work there but let's go and start from the beginning. So we have this in the denominator. I want you to look carefully. We can simplify that denominator. That denominator can be simplified as follows. Ready? The first one, now remember again, we're looking here, and we can simplify this denominator to be two, 3 minus h. Let's look at that again. So originally it looked like that, and what happens is this would become 2 plus 1 minus h. Well, 2 plus 1 is 3 minus h. And then the second denominator, 2 minus negative 1, that's going to become 2 plus 1, which gives us 3. So how does that help us? Well, we can have a common denominator. Now, some of you are going, well, we could simplify 3 over 3. And yes, you could. And that will give you 1, which is fine. Or... If you didn't, you found a common denominator, we'll find out that the 3 gets simplified. So, again, common denominator, which is 3 times 3 minus h. The numerator, you find a common denominator, so we have to simplify the numerator. So we have one fraction as opposed to the subtraction of two fractions. We have one using a common denominator. And now we're going to have 9 minus 9, which is 0 plus 3h. So we're going to have 3h on the top over 3 times 3 minus h all multiplied by 1 over h. 
So let's look at that again, just slowly so you can understand. So we're going to have over one. Okay, so what happens here? If you look carefully, this H can cancel with this H. This 3 can cancel with this 3. So what will result in once we cancel the H's and we cancel the 3's, we end up with an equation that says 1 over 3 minus H. Why is this important? Well, folks, this turns out to be the general equation for the slope of the tangent at x equals negative 1. Okay, so what that means is that this equation at x equals negative 1, I can choose any small number h and I will figure out what this equation will be. So let's look at when I plug in. Now let's use a small number, such as 0 0.001, and plug it in. What do we get? We get 1 over 3 minus 0 0.001, and that gives us a number of 0 0.3334 meters per second. Because remember, so it depends on the unit that we're talking about. In this case, it'd be unit meters per second, or in any, it could be meters per second, or in a case you would say, if you didn't know the units or you didn't have the units listed, you can say um, some sort of displacement unit uh, slash time unit. So uh, units per time. So whatever the units are here, so let's, let's write that out. Units, some sort of units is always measured over some sort of time and that's always going to be the um, the uh, sorry the units that you're going to use let's look at another example where we will use to f this difference quotient so one more folks ready okay all right example number two Determine the slope of the tangent of the curve y equals 2x squared plus 3x at x equals negative 1 using the difference quotient. So again, we're using negative 1, but it could be any value, folks, okay? The goal is, is to use the difference quotient. Delta y over delta x is equal to, so we plug in the x plus h into the equation minus f at x all over h. And we're going to substitute x equals negative 1. When we substitute x equals negative 1, we get delta y over delta x is equal to the following. Naturally, algebraically, what would you do next? Hopefully, you're thinking, okay, I have this going on. I should probably expand that. And if you were thinking of expanding this, you're exactly on the right track. So when you expand it, you're going to get the following. And once you do that, what you're going to do is collect, expand again, and collect like terms. When I expand it out, I get the following. Okay, we're going to collect like terms here. So I'm going to repeat this on the next screen. Here we go. Same concept. So it's all the same question repeated. And what will happen now? We're going to collect like terms. This negative 2 with this negative 3 with this plus 1 turns out to be 0. This 2h squared stays. And then we have a minus 4h plus 3h. What does that give us? Minus h all over h. Now, what do you think you should be doing next? Hopefully, you're thinking, hmm, I should probably try and get rid of this h. Folks, that's exactly what you need to do. Every single one with the difference quotient, the h on the bottom has to disappear. Later on, when we learn the calculus, we're going to learn why that h has to disappear. At this point in time, that's what you're forced to do. You have to make that h disappear. So, we're going to make it disappear by getting h by itself out and 2h minus 1 inside. So we're common factoring the h out. That cancels with the h on the bottom. Yay for us. And then what will happen is we're left with 2h minus 1. 
What is 2h minus 1? Well, that is the general equation of the slope of the tangent at, on this curve at x equals negative 1. So, what do we do with this? Well, we're now going to sub h for a very small number so that delta y over delta x is equal to the following. It's almost equal to negative 1. So there's this approximation. We plug it in, we get this number. What is this close to? It's close to negative 1. All right, folks, hopefully you understand how to do difference quotient so that you are able to get the general equation of the slope of the tangent because this difference quotient is crucial and vital that you know how to do this now because in calculus it becomes that much tougher. Hope this helps folks. Take care. Talk to you soon.